finally. You want to check through the figures to see if they correspond with yours? Well, let's hope that they do. So we don't have to spend too much time at the field office tomorrow. I'd like to start the cost breakdown for drilling on that Harris lease. The securities. They're negotiable. Exactly. Oh, you all right? Yes, sir, my arm hurts a little. You took an awful chance. But it was worth it. This I know we can trace. lost by the thief led to the swift apprehension of Bud Towns, a young mining engineer recently fired by the victim of the theft, Bob Colburn. However, when the police picked Towns up at his apartment shortly after the robbery, they found none of the stolen quarter of a million dollars in negotiable securities. There's no doubt about his guilt, Herb. Why, both Norma and I positively identified Towns. Well, if uh, the man's so obviously guilty, why do you want me to talk to him? Because I want my securities back. That's something for the police to take care of, Bob. Oh, I know that. But you see, Herb, I want you to help him. If he admits the theft and if he returns the securities. Represent him legally? Sure, get him out with a minimum sentence. Or whatever you lawyers do in cases like this. I don't understand. Basically, he's a good kid. He just got off to a bad start, and I feel a little responsible for it. You mean because you fired him? Yes. Well, you had good grounds for doing that. Well, yes and no. Oh, sure, he spent a lot of my money on an offshore drilling process that I told him not to bother with, but... Well, maybe I was too hasty. The process needed study, but it hit my work. He's full of ideas and enthusiasms. Maybe too much sometimes. But that's what makes our business tick. Now, perhaps if I had talked to him and explained why the process was wrong... Instead, I pulled the rug out from under him. You want him to have a second chance, is that it? I think he did this out of bitterness, Herb. If I have that much influence on him, maybe I can get him back on the right track. All right, Bob. I'll talk to him. But I can't promise anything. That's all I ask. Thanks, sir. Okay, Bob. But why, uh, Town steals a quarter of a million dollars from Coburn. And now Coburn wants to get the thief off the rack. I don't get it. Well, Coburn feels a little guilty. He figures he forced Towns into the position that made him steal. All right. I'll let you talk to him. It's not going to do any good. He's guilty, period. I didn't say I thought he was innocent, John. But Herbert! Wait a minute. Did I hear you correctly? That you agree a man is guilty? He appears to be. I'm going to try and get him to return the securities he took. I don't believe it. I, I just don't believe it. Herbert L. Maris, protective of the innocent, actually agrees that a man is guilty. You know, this is going to be a day long to remember, Counselor. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Maris, but I don't need your help. I don't need Coburn's help, either. 
I'll walk out of here on my own, because I'm innocent. Well, the police don't seem to think so. They have ample evidence to convict you. What evidence? A cufflink I haven't used in months, and Coburn's identification of me. He'd say anything to get even with me for spending his money. Miss Ames identified you, too. Why shouldn't she? She wants to keep her job. I, well, she's got a title, Secretary Treasurer. That doesn't mean that Coburn doesn't tell her what to do. All right, Towns. There's no point in making it more difficult. Coburn admits he was wrong about firing you, and he wants to make up for it. Well, it's too late. Nevertheless, he's authorized me to act for you legally. Now, if you'll just tell me what you did with the securities, we can get on with this. I don't know where they are. I didn't steal them. I was home all evening. I checked your record. You knew a great deal about stocks and bonds. You worked for an investment house once. So? Well, you'd know how to sell negotiable securities. Sure, I do. That makes me guilty. Doesn't help your case any. Look, Mr. Maris, I've read about you. Besides being a top attorney, you're supposed to be fair. Anxious to help people who are innocent. I am innocent. I'm as innocent of stealing those securities as you are. Can you prove it? Can anyone prove that you were at home during the robbery? No. I was waiting for a man named Patterson, but he never showed up. Still, he could help establish the fact that you were at home. How? Or did he call to break the appointment? No. He sent me a telegram telling me he was interested in my offshore drilling rig. He said he'd be at my place between 6 and 8. The robbery occurred a little after 8. Where can I reach Patterson? I don't know. I have no idea who he is. Oh, come off it, Towns. That's the truth. Well, how did he know about your work? In the oil business, the word gets around. No, I talked to a lot of people trying to get financing for my experiments. And when they didn't come through, you decided to cash in on Coburn's bonds. I don't believe there is anybody named Patterson. Well, you can believe anything you like, Mr. Maris. But if you think that I'm going to throw away everything that I've worked for to spend 10 years behind bars, look, I will spend the rest of my life, if I have to, to prove that I'm innocent. Now, get out of here. Will you please go? All right, Terrence. Right, sit down, sit down. Go on. start the beginning. Well, Herb, did he tell you where he hid the securities? No. <laughs> well, I told you it'd be a waste of time talking to him. And he didn't tell me because he didn't take them. He's not guilty. What? Well, you were in this office less than 20 minutes ago and agreed with me that Towns is guilty. Since then, I've changed my mind. And uh, now I suppose you're going to handle the case. I'll do what I can for him. Oh, and John, Towns wants to know if you found his car yet. It was parked in front of his house. He says he didn't see it when your men picked him up. I know, I know, Herb. I've reported it and... Well, I'll let you know if we pick it up. Oh, Herb, look, I can't let you do this. You're my friend and... Well, you know the evidence we have against the boy. And look, here's the cufflink he lost. It matches the tie clasp we found in his apartment. He says he hasn't worn them for a long time and besides, they could have been stolen. Yes, that could be true. But Coburn and Miss Ames identified Towns before we picked him up. Despite the fact the thief was wearing a stocking over his head? Well, yes. Uh, that plus general physical appearance. And that isn't all, Herb. Towns had plenty of motive, but no alibi. And don't tell me about the telegram and the man he was supposed to be. We found out that telegram was sent from a phone booth and paid for just two blocks from where Towns lived. How do you still believe he's innocent? As innocent as you or I. Innocent? Now, what kind of a statement is that? I ask you to help recover my securities. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Well, you're doing it in a pretty strange way. I simply believe the Towns is innocent, and keeping him in jail isn't going to help find the securities. Innocent, my foot. Why, Norm and I both recognized him immediately. With his face hidden by a stocking? Yes. I thought you wanted to help Towns. I said I'd help him if he told the truth and if he returned the securities. I did not say I'd help him go away scot-free with a quarter of a million dollars of my money. No, no, Herb, I don't operate that way. How do you operate? 
Are you interested in finding the real thief or just anybody who happens to be handy? Now, I don't believe that Towns is guilty. But he's not going to be able to prove it without help. All right, Herb. You do what you want. But don't send me the bill. Sorry, Mr. Maris. You know Mr. Coburn when he gets angry. I'm afraid so. Anyway, you didn't walk off. Uh, I'd like to talk to you if you have a minute. Oh? Well, I do have to get over to field office number three with these figures. Why don't I drive you and we can talk along the way? All right. <laughs> I wish I could help Mr. Maris, but as I told the police, I knew it was Towns almost immediately. No, but let's go back. Isn't it true that if you hadn't recognized the coupling, you wouldn't have known who it was? No. I'd seen him in the office often enough to recognize his walk and his general physical appearance anywhere. The fact remains that you can't be positive because you couldn't see his face. I recognized Towns, Mr. Maris, and so did Mr. Colburn. The coupling. How did you know it was Towns? Well, that's easy. About six months ago, all of us at the office chipped in and bought him the set for his birthday. Oh, Mr. Bradley! May I have last month's report? Why, well, surely, Miss Anderson. All right, Norma, let's uh, try another approach. How many people knew the securities were in Coburn's safe? Oh, I guess uh, all of his business associates. That's about all. Did any of them come to the office that day? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Harris, our accountant. Uh, George Finley. The head of National Oil? Yes. He's quite wealthy and quite chubby. Anyone else? Um, Hank Parsons. No point in bothering with him. He's just an old wildcatter who works for us whenever he goes broke. Right now, he's foreman at the field we just left. Isn't it unusual for a field man to come into the office in town? Normally, yes. But old Hank is quite unusual. You see, he spends every dollar he can get his hands on on buying hopeless leases. And he spends his spare time trying to persuade Mr. Colburn to finance drilling on them. That's the reason he came to see Colburn? Yes. He's sitting on a lease now. He swears there's a gusher on it. But he's got to start drilling within the next three weeks or the lease will expire. I hope you'll excuse me now, but I have got to go. Norma, just one more question. If what you say is true, then apparently Parsons is in need of money. Well, I can't remember when he wasn't in need of money. And he usually manages to get it, too, by persuasion. Thanks. Excuse me, but I've got to go to work now. Sure, I knew the kid. He used to come out here and pester my men. Interrupted drilling, asking all kinds of foolish questions. The kind that any roused about it learned in no time doing an honest day's work in the field. Evidently, you didn't like Towns. Oh, I don't like or dislike anyone. Just that in my time, you learn from doing. And you're always too busy doing to have time for stealing. I understand you've been trying to raise some money. Doesn't everybody? Everybody doesn't have an oil lease that's about to expire. And if it does expire, you lose everything you put into it. A little over $7,000. Well, I will admit you get around a lot. How did you find out how much my lease cost? I called the people you leased from. It just goes to show you, everybody's a blabbermouth these days. Then you do need money desperately, don't you? Nope. Not anymore, don't. Right here's a receipt. A registered letter I just mailed to Coburn. You see, I'm quitting this week. You see, mister, I found myself a backer. Got all the money I need to drill next week. When did you suddenly get this money? Uh, yesterday. You know Coburn was robbed night before last. Now listen, youngster. Don't you go try to pull any of your cute lawyer tricks on me. Why don't you ask me what you really want to know? All right, Parsons. Did this sudden financing come from the securities you stole from Coburn? 
Nope. Then where did you get the money? I can't tell you. Can't or won't? Well, I can't, Mr. Marius. I can't because it's part of the deal to not reveal my backer's identity. It's in the contract. Not even to remove suspicion from yourself of having committed a crime? Now, look, you can say what you want to. You can suspect anybody you got in mind, but I ain't going to tell you where I got my money, even if I had to go to court. You know, you're about the same size as Towns, and just about as spry. Spryer, mister, and tougher. <laughs> Hey, Marius, I still got some drilling shares for available. Sell them to you real cheap. Keep your name a secret, same as my other backers. Herb, I got something important to tell you. I've got something for you, John. A man named Parsons. Same height, physical appearance as Towns, except for his age. Oh, Herb, will you wait a minute? Let me finish telling you about Parsons. There's no point in finishing. Look. It's a band from around a group of stolen securities. And look, you can read the type of bonds it was tied around, the amount, and Coburn's initials. Where'd you get this? Under the seat of a car. Your client's car. We found it parked in a 24-hour supermarket parking lot. Just five minutes' walk from where he lives. While Town's guilt appeared to be confirmed by the new evidence, my interview with Parsons had convinced me that further investigation was necessary, and I persuaded Lieutenant Weston to talk to Colburn before turning the case over to the district attorney. Hello, Bert. Hi. Lieutenant, how are you? Sit down. How are you? Bob, um, what do you know about Hank Parsons? Uh, now, Herb, I think this case has finally taken its effect on you. Are you trying to tell me that you now suspect Parsons of this robbery? I do. Mr. Coburn, my men did some checking, and we learned that Parsons was in town on the day of the theft. As a matter of fact, he came to talk to you about some business. He did? But so what? Then you know he's desperately in need of money to start drilling on a lease he holds. And if he doesn't get the money, he'd lose everything he'd put into it. Well, that's the gamble an oil man takes. Parsons knows that. Besides, he's got his money. He's quitting me at the end of the week. Well, doesn't this sudden financing he's found disturb you? No. Parsons has raised money before. But this money arrived too soon after the theft to suit me. The very next day, in fact. And he refuses to say where he got it. Now, look here. Keeping your sources of financing secret isn't unusual in this business. Well, I'll admit Parsons is a cagey operator, but that doesn't mean he's a crook. Well, that man has made and lost more money in his life than you and I'll ever see. I'm afraid he's right, Herb. We don't have enough to go after Parsons. Bob, just who knows what you have in your safe? Norma, myself, Mrs. Harris, our accountant, George Findlay. How well do you know Miss Norma Ames? Norma, will you come in here, please? Yes, Mr. Coburn? Norma, who do you talk to about the business? How much I make when I keep in the safe? Why, no one. You know I've always kept your affairs confidential. I know. But I wanted the lieutenant to hear it. Well, did I do something wrong? Oh, no, of course not. Mr. Maris is still trying to convince me that Towns isn't guilty. I'm also trying to convince him it's possible that somebody else that works for him is guilty. Perhaps somebody at the field. And Parsons is the only one who fills that bill. No! No! I'm not revealing where I got the money. Oh, Hank, this is a serious You matter. bet it's serious. I got a contract you asking me to go back on. You ought to know me better than that, Coburn. I'm beginning to wonder if I know you at all. Now, look here. Every time you need a job or an advance in salary, you come to me. You expect me to trust you. Yet you're unwilling to clear yourself in my eyes. Yeah, you would like me to do that, wouldn't you? Tell you all about my lease. Well, you ain't going to find out no more than that spy you sent down here did. Spy? What are you talking about? I'm talking about that female executive you had down here spying on me. So you could take out a lease on the property adjoining mine and capitalize on the fine. Oh, what's the matter with you, Parsons? You're getting senile in your old age. Norma comes down here once a month, and that's to check the books in the field office. 
She used to come down here once a month. Now she comes two or three times a week. You ask Bradley. I worked with him a couple of days. Now she's been pestering him ever since. What about all this, Coben? It's the first I've heard of it. Well, if you don't believe me, ask Bradley. She's probably hanging around his neck now. Bradley, doesn't he work at the field office? He's in charge of it. Spying, that's ridiculous. Well, why is she playing up so cozy to him now? And not just out here, either. I saw them together in town when they come to see you. You mean the day of the theft? Yeah, they're having breakfast together. Well, that doesn't mean she's been spying on Bradley or you. Right, Bob, but it could mean something else. The night of the robbery, why did you open the safe? Well, Norma wanted to look at the books on that... Then she asked you to open the safe. Yes. Just a few minutes before he came in. And Bradley's the same size as Towns. And Norma knows exactly what's in that safe. You better pay Mr. Bradley a visit. branches off. I'll put some roadblocks in the main highway. Miss Martin, call the motor pool. I've got some trucks at the branch off we can use. Mr. Coburn, would you sign... Miss Martin, have them put one of those trucks across this road where it cuts into the main highway. Tell them to be careful. Bradley might be on. I'll radio ahead for help. Understand. Yes, you do. You don't like it, but you understand. <laughs> 